huge Mr. Beast drama, boys. Dogpack 404 is back, and this time with a school art project collage exposing Mr. Beast from the top. Hands down, crippling the Beast organization like Fight Club. Okay, so this video is going to focus around one instance of SA. I wanted to put all the SA allegations into one video. For a second, I thought he was Mexican. SA? <laughs> like, hola, SA. Jokes aside, this is a serious video and not a good look for Mr. Beast. There's some pretty hefty allegations levied here. Everything in this video is allegedly. This video is not monetized. It's for educational purposes only. Bro called Saul before the video. His exits are clear. He ain't getting sued. Mr. Beast's secret CEO, James Warren, uh, and his involvement in SA and SA cover-ups, uh, like the one including his uh, best friend, LaCoya Hill, who also happens to be Mr. Beast's secret chief operating officer, or was. Uh, and then I want to touch on the man himself, Jimmy Donaldson. Whoa, not even a minute in and we got new challengers approaching, except instead of Super Smash Bros, they're super smashing their employees without consent, allegedly. Completely under the radar, we're not we're not even aware of, of what's being um, swept under the rug. And I understand if he had one sex offender in his company. We all got that one weird homie, don't get me wrong, but multiple? That is insane. It's a doggy dog world. After I called out James Warren by name in my last video, his uh, Instagram and Facebook got taken down and his LinkedIn got taken down. I don't know about y'all, but that face looked like he up to no good. Uh, there's allegedly domestic violence charges that were filed against him. Um, and I say allegedly because it turns out there's a lot of people in North Carolina named James Warren who who assault their girlfriends, I guess. Just like every other guy, I like Dogpack, but I feel like you gotta get the right one. This is kind of a serious allegation to levy here. You might, if you get the wrong guy, that's a, that's a big oopsie, you know what I mean? It turns out there's a lot of people in North Carolina named James Warren. You know what? Scratch the Warren. I've never met a dude I can trust named James. James Warren, also allegedly an ex-drug addict. Uh, I've heard that he, he offered cocaine and to editors to stay late. Hold up, this dude just like me for real for real. But on the real note, focus on the important stuff, the SA. I don't care what he does on his free time, even if it's f***ers and blow. Bunch of f***ers and coke. This right, you're making him sound like a good boss. Imagine working at overtime shift, your boss shows up, he's like, want an eight ball? Uh, and, then, and then the really big thing is that there was some incident between him and a female colleague uh, that resulted in the female colleague leaving the company and receiving three years in severance pay. A woman getting severance pay for three years? It gotta be sus. I'm still actively looking into this incident, so if you have information, let me know. Uh, but I've heard from multiple credible sources that this this is true and this did happen. So far, the only evidence we have is hearsay. I'm gonna need a little bit more complete evidence to fully get, like, judge, jury, and executioner this guy. But, you know, weird stuff, nevertheless. Running a real estate Ponzi scheme. Scheme. Ponzi schemes are great up until they just go bust. Yeah, so before working at Mr. Beast, James Warren uh, was involved in a literal fraud. Mr. Beast straight up gag affiliated at this point. He got mob ties. Dogpack then goes over Mr. Warren's history surrounding fraud and stuff reading through court documents. But personally, I don't think this is really that important. And the next guy is crazier. And LaCoya Hill was running an adult entertainment event business in San Francisco called LaCoya Hill Entertainment. Uh, then in 2019, he was hired to Mr. Beast as a producer. <laughs> Maybe a bit peculiar, odd if you will, to hire an adult entertainer into a kid's company selling chocolate bars, but you know, I digress. Mr. Beast hired uh, Johnny Sins as the janitor, I guess. Uh, it's not the real issue though, the issue is that in late 2021, he was allegedly fired for sexually assaulting his assistant. Now I put fired in quotation marks because he was actually quietly moved to the dubbing company, which was Unilingo at the time. Here is, uh, Proof that he used the lead LaCoya at Unilingo.tv email, links back to him, links to these photos, one of which was the profile picture for his YouTube channel. So he's straight up alleging Mr. Beast of a cover-up here because they be moving this guy left, right, and centered. This is crazy. Crazy. Okay, few things. LaCoya sexually assaulted his assistant who was straight and LaCoya was gay. You probably already know that. But James is best friends with him, so holy shit, was that surprising that they kept him around way longer than they should have. So you're telling me this gay black guy, his best friend's name James that he pulled a James Charles. Now that is truly poetic. There were reports of him making the assistant sleep in the same room slash bed with him on trips. 
touching him inappropriately, and dangling his job in front of him. This guy's allegedly unhinged as hell and Mr. Beast got him as the COO. I am promoted to Chief Financial Officer, which is how I personally was introduced to him. Here's some evidence from the internal Slack channel on Mr. Beast showing LaQuea Hill acting in some COO capacity. Why his name sound like a seltzer brand? Why his name sound like a landmark near Bohemian Grove? <laughs> also, Mr. Beast, I understand. Little Nas X, black gay guy, perfect DEI hire, but seriously, bro, your company got a DIE if you keep doing this kind of stuff. He an alleged sex offender and you pretty much cover it for him. I asked them, did you see or hear of any sexual misconduct at the company? They say, yes, LaCoya Hill, the current COO. In 2021, he had an assistant named Victim's Name. I heard LaCoya acted very inappropriately with Victim. Booking hotel rooms with only one bed, walking around in his underwear. Dogpack then uncovered a testimony that talked about how the workplace culture around Mr. Beast was very weird, very macho, very Blizzard 2.0 type-esque. A female's perspective. As she says, on my very first day, I was told to avoid being alone in a room with certain people in positions of power. At least once a week, I was subjugated to inappropriate questions and conversations. Once a male coworker asked me what I would do if Jimmy assaulted or harassed me. Just release Overwatch 3 at this point. You're basically Blizzard. While this might not directly look bad for Mr. Beast, some of you might not understand, it's the people he keeps around himself and what kind of culture he cultivates. It's his company at the end of the day. At this point, how many coincidences do you need to make a pattern? And the more testimonies come out, the less good it looks for Mr. Breast. You can't take anything to HR either because Jimmy's mom runs it. You can't just fill your HR department with people on your side. Talk about conflict of interest. Oh, Jimmy would never say anybody. Oh. If you ask for one or what the company's policies are, they just tell you to ask them and they'll let you know if anything is against the rules, but again, there's nothing in writing. With a company handling hundreds of employees and millions of dollars, you'd think they'd be more on track. But then they hired, uh, I guess, Harvey Weinstein's legal team, allegedly. You should have went with OJ Simpson, Mr. Beast, rookie mistake, El Bozo. To re-review everything. So I guess they weren't happy with the results of the first internal investigation. I just find it weird how you could even have an internal investigation here. Like, it just makes no sense. Just like Dr. Disrespect, they're gonna find no wrongdoing every time, no? I'm not saying they're doing anything, but when have you ever seen an internal investigation look bad for the people running the investigation? Practically never. And then Mr. Beast hired this guy, Jeff Hosenbold, as a, you know, a president for his company, and uh, yeah, let's just leave it at that. My name is Jeff. Now, but what's ironic about this is that Jeff Hausenbold has been in the news previously for, for the internal culture that he helped create as managing partner at the SoftBank Vision Fund. You know, someone described with macho culture and uh, maybe per se a culture of recklessness ain't the best guy to hire, but that's just me. In a discussion about whether to invest in the stationary bike startup Peloton in 2017, according to two people who were in the meeting, Hausenbold opined that its exercise equipment appealed in part to men who masturbated to its workout videos. Dude, I want to jerk off! You know, cheeky guy, to say the least. So yeah, maybe I don't see the vision with uh, hiring this guy as the new president. Also, this is just what I can share. The executives are weird. The co-workers are weird. Even the president is weird. Who's next? The interns? The janitor? Christ. I'm um, also trying to save some things for, for when Mr. Beast responds. Uh, so anyway, yeah. Thanks for watching. And he ends the video with a paid actor raccoon. I know what you're doing, buddy. I'm on to you. So subscribe to my channel to put an end to Mr. Beast. He's been on the top for far too long.